Now this video is really important. And the reason why it's really important is that if you were to say to me, Jane, I don't want to do any exercise during my pregnancy, but if I had to do one thing, what would it be? Well, it would be this, working your pelvic floor. Um, that's because the pelvic floor is the most important muscle when it comes to the amount of stress that your body gets during pregnancy. Um, the weight of the baby pushes down on your bladder, which in turn will push down on your pelvic floor. And a lot of people think that, well, if you have a C-section, surely your pelvic floor is going to be fine. Well, it's not because not only do you still get that weight of the baby pressing down, if you've had a C-section, your abdominal wall will have been compromised, the deep abdominal muscle will have been compromised, and that in turn affects the pelvic floor. And the reason for that is that these muscles all work together. They are a collective. They are a team. You've got your diaphragm at the top, pelvic floor at the bottom, your abdominal muscles that come around the front, and you have muscles that come up through the back as well. And they all work together to support your spine. Um, obviously, the pelvic floor is important for a number of different reasons. They help you poo, pee, have sex. They also are there to support you underneath. And all the while, that baby is pressing down, the pelvic floor can get weaker and weaker. Um, the pelvic floor can get weak for other reasons as well. You may get lots of colds and coughs, and that can weaken the pelvic floor. Then there's a birthing process itself. So the pelvic floor can be cut, it can get torn, it, it will most definitely be a bit bruised and a bit battered. All of these things can heal, but the healthier your pelvic floor is, the stronger your pelvic floor is, the more movement your pelvic floor has, then the better it will function and the more quickly you will recover from any or one of these things. One in three, these are the statistics, one in three women will suffer from urinary incontinence. Now, I actually think that that, that figure is um, a low figure. I think it's probably a lot more. I reckon more like 50% of us. That's because a lot of us will never admit that we have this issue. But peeing yourself when you don't mean to pee yourself is not normal. It's not something that we should have to put up with and go, right, well, that's my lot. But sadly, we do. We think that that is our lot and that's what we should have to put up with after childbirth or during the menopause or whenever it is. Um, but we don't. If we have a strong pelvic floor, if we work the pelvic floor, we don't have to go through that. There are other complications as well that you can get. And this video is not, one, not, not the video to talk about that, but we can definitely have that conversation. And I would invite you to go onto the forum uh, to talk to us, to send in questions if you do have any questions, because by asking us questions, it opens up the conversation and more people can learn. So please do ask any question you like about pelvic floor. For now, though, you just need to know this, that the pelvic floor has to work. It has to be worked every single day because it's under a lot of stress. So the more you connect to it, the more you are aware of it, the more likely you are to be strong and less likely to be suffering from incontinence issues afterwards. So what is the pelvic floor? What does it do? Where is it? Well, we've talked about what it does. Where is it? It runs from your coccyx at the back, the tailbone at the back, to your pubic bone at the front. It's like a hammock underneath you. If you were to pull the sides of the hammock out, it attaches to your sit bones on either side. This forms like a diamond shape. Now, it's not one muscle. It's several groups of muscles and several layers of muscle as well. One of the layers is a muscle that runs from the coccyx at the back to just in front of the sit bones at the front and it's kind of like an elongated horseshoe shape and it's like a sling literally from the from the back towards the front and um, that's one big muscle and then there's several other muscles they run from the front to the sides and then from the sides in towards the back and this is what forms the different layers of the pelvic floor it's quite good to try and feel the different areas of the pelvic floor because that will help you to establish where you may have issues or you may have weakness and um, certainly postnatally it will help you because if you have one part of the pelvic floor that doesn't feel right then you can try to try to work more towards that that part just being aware of your anatomy gets you thinking more about it the more you think about it the more connected you are to it then the more you can work it to your advantage and I really do mean that one of the things you need to be able to do is contract the pelvic floor but the other thing you need to do 
is you need to be able to let it go. You need to be able to relax it. I had a conversation with an obstetrician once where she said, if I can ask a woman to just relax the pelvic floor during um, the birthing process, that really helps me as an obstetrician, being able to relax. So she can literally say to you, right, can you relax your pelvic floor now? Now, who's going to know how to do that? Well, you will if you follow this video and lots of other videos in, in this series. And it really is powerful to you to be able to do that. So to contract the pelvic floor. So it's like this diamond shape. Um, to work specifically from the back, we're going to scoop up kind of thing from the back of the pelvic floor into the front. So what I like to say is imagine the inside of your tailbone and there's a little skier on the inside of your tailbone. And it's skiing off the end of your tailbone and like jumping off and up into your tummy. So it's like a scoop up and off. And to connect to the right area, you want to think of uh, lifting up through your back passage. So it's like stopping a fart from the back, okay? Now I'm sat on these blocks. And the reason I'm sat on these blocks is because it gives me a really good position to find and fill my pelvic floor. Um, you don't have to be sat on something like this, but the easy way to do this at home is to grab a pile of books, yeah, big books, and pile them up underneath you and straddle them. The reason it's so good is it takes pressure off the knees, but it also enables you to feel your sit bones. So the pelvic floor is that diamond shape, and it's attaching up on the inside of those sit bones. So if you're now sat on a pile of book, box, books even, um, go and get them off the shelf, put them down, yeah, and then you pull your butt cheeks out the way and sit on your sit bones, then you now know that your pelvic floor is up on the inside of those sit bones. So this really helps you to connect and to feel all the areas of the pelvic floor, which you will discover in, in a second. So we're going back to that back passage, that pulling up through the back passage. So sit nice and tall, feel those sit bones, make sure your butt cheeks are out the way, and then take a breath for me because we know that the pelvic floor works with your diaphragm. So this is the diaphragm here, this is the pelvic floor here. As you inhale, they both expand, as you exhale, they come up and in. So you inhale, expand, exhale, come up and in. So you work the pelvic floor up and draw it up and in when you exhale. So take a big deep breath for me, inhale, exhale, relax, and then stop from your back passage, stop a fart from the back, and think of that skier, and scoop your pelvic floor up and into your tummy and then let it drop back down. So remember the relaxation phase. Let it release. And then do that again. Take a breath. Inhale, exhale. Scoop up from the back of the pelvic floor and into the front. Now I'm asking you to breathe before each contraction. Don't think that you have to take a breath every time you contract your pelvic floor. You won't always have the time to do that. You might need to just pull it up and go. Uh, but it does help, particularly in this kind of situation. It slows you down, it makes you think, but it also helps the function and the thought of that pelvic floor being a part of a team of muscles that work together. And remember, teams, when they work together and are in unison, they are so powerful and you want your muscle teams to work together. So we're going to do that again. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, scoop up from the back and into the front and let it come back down. We'll do that one more time. Breathe, and then scoop up from the back of the pelvic floor and into the front, and then let it come back down. Now, I talked about there's some muscles that come around the front, and they almost form like a small diamond. So if you think of the big diamond, the whole of the pelvic floor area, and then there's like a smaller diamond that comes around the urethra and the vagina at the front. Now, think of picking up the four corners of that small diamond and lifting it up and underneath your chin. To do that, to feel it, Lean forward, keep your back tall, but just lean forward so you're bringing your pubic bone closer to your books or your blocks. So you're coming forward, and then you're going to stop a wee from the front, so sensation is more to the front, and you're going to try and lift it up and underneath your chin. So take a breath for me, inhale, and then stop a wee, pull up and underneath your chin, and let it come back down. And then do that again, take a breath. And then stop a wee and pull up and underneath your chin and let it come back down. Now keep doing that. Take a breath and then pull up underneath the chin and then let it come back down. So there are two distinct areas and you probably felt 
a lot weaker when you were pulling up those front ones. That might be because, depending on where you are in your pregnancy, the weight of the baby is pressing down and making it feel weaker. But it's a much smaller muscle area than the back anyway. But this is power. Being able, this is so powerful, being able to distinguish different parts of the pelvic floor and not only know how to lift them, but also how to let them go. Now, the other key thing is those sit bones that you're now sat on. Because what we want to do now is get a big lift of the pelvic floor all the way up, use all of its strength and power, and then let it come back down. So if you now think of not only pulling up from the back, pulling from the front, but also drawing those sit bones in, you're really going to get a strong contraction of your pelvic floor. So we're going to do that now. So go back to the big diamond and imagine you're now pulling the four corners of the big diamond up and inside you. And we're not just going to pull up and let it go. We're going to try and really pull up all the way to the top. Yeah? So take a nice big deep breath for me. Inhale. Exhale, relax. Now, scoop up from the back passage. Always go from the back foot first. Pull up from the front. Pull those two fillings in together and think of putting the sit bones up and in and go up and up and up and up and up and then let it drop back down. Now, this up and up and up and up, it's like a lift that can go up five floors. And as you come up through the five floors, you're getting into those deeper layers of the pelvic floor and you're lifting up and getting it stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. What you might also feel is your tummy coming in as you do that. That is brilliant if you feel that because, again, that's your team working. That's your big, this is called the TA, this deep abdominal muscle, the transverse abdominals. So that means that's working as well. So let's try that. Put your hands underneath your bump and then take a breath for me. Inhale. Exhale, relax. And then stop a fart from the back. Stop a wee from the front. So scoop it. Suction in. Pull the sit bones in and come up and up and up. You might just keep breathing and up and up all the way to the top. And then let it come back down. Now, how many floors can you get up to? So let's do that again. Breathe. Scoop up from the back. Draw in from the front, pull the sit bones in and come up and up. That's two and up. That's three and up. Can you get there? That's four and all the way to the top five. High as you can go. Can you hold it up there and then let it come back down? So this is a really good test for you because it gets you knowing how strong your pelvic floor is just by the sensation of how many times you can come up and also whether, however high you can go up, whether you can sustain it up to that point you can get to, whether that's three, four, five floors. Can you hold it up there? And you need to be able to just continue breathing when you do that. Or try to avoid holding your breath, but just continue to breathe and just see if it will sustain and stay up. You also want resistive strength in the pelvic floor. So let's do it one more time. So you're going to take a breath, inhale, exhale, and then scoop up from the back, draw in from the front and pull up and up. That's two and up. That's three and up. That's four up that's five and now you want to see if you can resist it on the way back down so that it stops on the floors on the way back down and that again is really hard to do so don't worry if you can't do it but the whole point is if you keep practicing this you will get stronger and you will be able to do that there are other exercises as well but that going up lift going up through five floors is one really important one you can do what we call the volume switch turning the pelvic floor on and up and then turning it back off. So we'll try that now. So take a breath, inhale, exhale, relax, and then stop from the back, stop from the front, and now keep lifting it on and up, on and up, pull the sit bones in, keep turning it on and up, 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 and then let it come back down. Yeah, gonna do that again, take a breath. Scoop up from the back, suction in from the front, pull those two feelings together and up inside you and keep pulling up and keep pulling up and keep pulling up and keep pulling up. Turn the dial up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Can you feel your tummy coming in as well? Should do. And then let it come back down, all the way back down and down and down and let it relax. Yeah. Okay, so one more is a quick one. Now, this actually I don't think is as important as the others because it's not going to develop your strength. But what it is important for is just that quick reaction of the pelvic floor to get it to flick on quickly. And that's really useful because sometimes you just need to feel your pelvic floor really quickly. Um, and it's also going to help with that quick response where you um, cough or you sneeze, you can quickly pull your pelvic floor up. So what you do there is think of the pelvic floor like a flick switch. So you flick it on, but you flick it off. So gathering everything up, 
pull up the pelvic floor and then let it drop. And pull up the pelvic floor and then let it relax. And then pull everything up and then let it relax. So again, doing a number of those each day could be quite useful to you. Now, the recommended number of pelvic floor contractions you need to do is 100 pelvic floor contractions. Now, if your pelvic floor is functioning fine and you're using it in general activities all the time, then you don't need to purposely sit on something like this and do 100 contractions. Who's got time in the day for that? But you can fit it into your everyday life. So every time you pick something up, every time you, you step up or over or onto something, think of contracting your pelvic floor first before you take the movement. Just by doing that, you'll start to include your pelvic floor exercises into your everyday life. Um, it's also quite good to just think of places where you can do it. That might be when you're cleaning your teeth or when you're sat in the car and the car stops at traffic lights. It's a signal for you to do some pelvic floor exercises. It might be when you're sat on the train, the tube, the bus. Um, it could be uh, when you are sat at your desk. You have certain specific times in the day you remember to do some pelvic floor exercises. Don't get to 100 and keep counting. Um, it, that's not important. What is important is that you make sure every single day you have in several different places try to connect to your pelvic floor. And then before you know it, you will have done 100 pelvic floor contractions without even having to think about it. And that's the best way to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it and for us to be able to make even more content for you, I'd really appreciate it. I'd love it in fact if you could subscribe and like the video and obviously if you want to make any comments as well because any comments you make we will be able to act on that and produce more material that you like.